everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be bringing you my February TBR. TBR videos are kind of my favorite thing on the planet. I feel like it's like every month you get this fresh new start and you're like I'm gonna read all of these books and you just like really hype yourself up. I love watching other people's TBR videos and I love making TBR videos. The problem is that usually by midway through the month I have 27 books on my TBR for the next month and that's just not realistic. So this month I have two videos planned that will have kind of secret TBRs that I'm going to give you a sneak peek into a couple books that will be on them but not all of them. I plan on doing the contemporary thon round six so I'll be releasing that TBR I think the second week in February but I do have one book that I know is going to fit a lot of the prompts that I'm going to show you. I have a couple books that I want to read for pleasure and then I will still be picking my books out of my coffee mugs. Also really sad day if you watched my last month's video I have this beautiful Disney villains coffee mug that I was using and it died. I accidentally dropped it and broke the handle off of it so I've had to change my mugs. So I have these gorgeous vintage mugs and we are doing vintage Mickey and vintage Minnie. Mickey has my series and Minnie has all of my backlisted TBRs. So I'm going to hop in and start with the one book from last month that I said if I read any book this month it is going to be this book and then I, your girl didn't get to it. I did finish the second book in the series last month. It just took me a little bit longer. So my plan is to read this one this month. I'm not going to say if I read any book this month because uh, that obviously didn't work out for me and that is The Toll by Neil Schusterman. So last month I promised that I would read this book but this month your girl is going to do it. This is the final installment of the Ark of the Scythe series and this is going to be so good. Book number two left me like sister shook my mind was blown i finished reading it at work and literally i just like set it down and just stared at it for a good 10 minutes and was like i don't want to what what am i supposed to do with life but the plus side is that i was very late to the scythe game so all three books are already out and i could immediately just go home and pick up the toll but this is a chunky monkey this is a big book it's over 600 pages and i knew that i wouldn't be able to finish it in january and there are a few books in january that i still need to finish so for now we're taking a little cleanse and at the start of february i will be picking this one up the next book came out in january and i am so excited about it i had to pick it up up as soon as it came out and that is One of Us is Next by Karen M. McManus. So I loved One of Us is Lying. I loved Two Can Keep a Secret and this is the sequel to One of Us is Lying and that was essentially like a breakfast club style book where all of these kids from different groups get thrown in detention and then one of them has a peanut allergy he somehow gets peanuts and dies and then all of these kids start getting like these weird messages and are all being blamed for it and it turns out that somebody is trying to set them up. I don't know a lot about this book. I don't need to know a lot. I didn't really want to spoil anything but I know that the back says it's a new year at Bayview and no one's secrets are safe and I am like living for this. Everybody if you have watched any of my videos at this point you know YA horror mystery locked in. It's for me. The next book is the one that I will definitely be having on my contemporary thon TBR. Whether I get to it or not I don't know but I think that it fills a lot of the prompts and that is Ask Again Yes by Mary Beth Keeney and this says how much can a family forgive. I'm just going to read the little blurb and it says a profoundly moving novel about two neighboring families in a suburban town the bond between their children a tragedy that reverberates over four decades the daily intimacies of marriage and the power of forgiveness. So this will cover prompts one two four and five of contemporary thon which is the color challenge. It's got green on the cover clearly. Ow. That hurt. 
This is a new author to me. I've never read anything by her. This has been on my backlist for over a year and I've yet to pick it up because I'm a major slacker. If not a year for like a, quite a while though. I've had this book for quite a while. And I would consider this hard hitting. So that's just a little taste test of what I might read for Contemporary Thon. I have a TBR that I'm setting up with more books on it, but Contemporary Thon is only a week. So we'll see what your girl can do. The next two books, I'm just going to give you a sample of an upcoming video. And that is A Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde and Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. If you can't tell, these are obviously classics and these are obviously tiny. So your girl is going to read some small classics and see if they are up to the hype and see if you can put a story that tests time in such a condensed book. I'm excited. There will be other ones on the list, but if those seem to perk your interest, then definitely check out that video next month because it's something that is completely out of my comfort zone to smash out some classics and I'm excited to see what I think about them. The next little preview into a video that I plan on filming later this month, I have got Paper Girls and Heartstoppers. Oh, I'm so excited. So these are obviously graphic novels. I have told you guys a little bit about wanting to do like a graphic novel taste test. And this is two books from the sample that I will be reading next month. All of them are very, very different. But if you're interested in dipping your toes into graphic novels, you will have to check out that video because I think I have collected some really amazing graphic novels that I am super excited about reading. Also, I'm going to throw out there that Heartstoppers would also be great for contemporary thon. I think that it covers like at least four or five of the prompts for me and I might be including it in my contemporary on TBR as well. Okay, we've reached my favorite part and that is coffee mug time. So I'm going to start out with the series and that is Mickey over here. We're going to lean in. I'm going to dig around and pull out a series right here. Let's see what I got. Oh my gosh, guys, I got Red Queen and I am so nervous. Okay, my dudes, I grabbed the box set that I have. I think that there's more books now, though. I think there might be like four, but I own the first two. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know a lot about this book. I bought these on Super Sale, and I, at the time, was like, I'm going to get into fantasy, and then I never picked them up. So I'm going to read the back for you. Mare Barrow's world is divided by blood. Those with red and those with silver. Mare and her family are lowly reds destined to serve the silver elite whose supernatural abilities make them nearly gods. Maurice steals what she can to help her family survive, but a twist of fate leads her to the royal palace itself, where in front of the king and all his nobles, she discovers an ability that she didn't know she had, except her blood is red. To hide this impossibility, the king forces her into a role of a lost silver princess and bethrows her to one of his own sons. As Mare is drawn further into the silver world, her actions put into motion a deadly and violent dance, pitting prince against prince and Mare against her own heart. Hmm. I'm not gonna lie, this actually sounds like something that I might like. I'm kind of excited to read this. I was really hoping to get a contemporary series that I had, but that's what the cups are all about, is getting things that I should be reading and that I bought to read, but never picked up, and this is exactly that. So I'm gonna give these my best shot. I'm pretty excited. Okay, it's time for mini. And we are gonna pick two out of old girl here. So I'm gonna dig in. I'm gonna try to reach for like the bottom. And I've got this one. Let me see. Okay, I this is a good one. I got the Serpent King which I have been wanting to read for a long time and gets really good reviews. And then I'm just gonna pick my two and then go get them because I'm filming in a different room. Let me dig in. Ooh, I got this one. 
I dropped this one, putting it back in. So, I got ultimatum. Let me go grab those two books. I will be right back. Okay, so I grabbed The Serpent King by Jeff Zinter. I have only heard great things about this book. That is why I picked it up, but I just never got around to reading it. I know it has to do with a boy whose dad is like this Pentecostal like crazy preacher who does like the snake church thing and he forces him to deal with deadly snakes. And he's kind of an outcast at school and he hangs out with his friends. I know that like a lot of people describe this as just like gorgeous. And I definitely think that this is something that is going to be right up my alley. And I'm actually really happy that I picked this book out. So super excited. Good job coffee mug. The next book that I picked out of the coffee mug I bought at a bookstore closing. And that is Ultimatum by Matthew Glass. I'm not gonna lie, I don't remember anything about this, so I'm gonna read it for you real quick. It says, November 2032, Joe Benton has just been voted the 48th president of the United States. He is a man with a unique sense of destiny and a belief that he has a once in a generation opportunity to renew his country. Only days after winning, however, Benton learns in a secret meeting with his predecessor, Mike Gardner, that previous estimates regarding the effects of global warming on rising sea levels has been grossly underestimated. For the United States, the prospects are devastating. Miami will be washed into the ocean and Southern California will waste away to desert. Moreover, Gardner has engaged in secret failed negotiations with the Chinese over carbon emissions. So I don't think I'm gonna read the rest. I think that this looks like a political drama, which is super out of left field for me. I'm not sure why I picked this up, but the coffee mug says to read it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a go. I'm nervous. <laughs> so that is what I've got for my TBR this month, guys. There are many more books that we don't know about yet. So you'll just have to tune into other videos. But thank you so much for sticking with me and watching as always. I love you guys and I really appreciate the support. If you can like and subscribe, if you like what I'm doing, it helps me out a ton. I have a very ambitious February considering that it has less days of the month than any other month. So wish me luck. Thank you guys and I'll see you next time. Bye.